Hello everyone, my name is Dina Sabi. I'm a PhD candidate in computer science at the University of Toronto in Canada. On behalf of my co-authors, I present our paper, Be Our Guest, Intercultural Heritage Exchange Through Augmented Reality. Take this scenario. Assume we have two people from different cultures, Adam and Miriam. Each wants the other person to understand a practice from their cultural heritage around the simple object. Let's say about coffee. Adam explains a lot of things well and confidently. Now when it's Miriam's turn, she's hesitant. She's afraid that if she explains, Adam may not understand her cultural ritual. Maybe because her language is not good, maybe because her rhetoric is different. Whichever the reason is, Miriam is unable to do it. This is a normal scenario that happens frequently between someone from a dominant group like the host community, and another from a minority group, like a migrant. Each day of research about engaging migrants with the host community usually focuses on one-way communication, helping the migrants comprehend the local culture, but not the other way around as well. Also, each day of research often places all migrants in a single group, and lacks the necessary examination of cultural communication between migrants of different backgrounds. The goal of this project is to help mitigate the adversity of facing cultural differences between migrants and the host community and between migrants of diverse backgrounds to foster intercultural exchange. And therefore, we built Be Our Guest, an augmented reality application where a user is invited to the houses of people from different cultures and is asked to help with one of their cultural rituals around simple, everyday objects. Be Our Guest revolves around facilitating intercultural communication without the need for direct confrontation to avoid any discomfort that could accompany it. Therefore, we use theories of situated cognition, immersive theater, and affordances as design guidelines. Situated cognition is a theoretical approach to learning which argues that knowledge is gained through situated activities with social, cultural, and physical context. Immersive theater describes centering performance around the audience, engulfing them both perceptually and psychologically. Finally, the term affordance refers to the specific cues an object can offer based on its physical characteristics. However, it is up to the individual to decide the usage the object can offer within its physical constraints. To ensure authenticity and avoid misrepresentation, we took a crucial step in collecting information about cultural practices surrounding domestic objects. Over three phases, we explored different approaches and reflected on their shortcomings to reach the most effective method of obtaining stories that could be replicated in an AR setting. We found that offering multiple artifacts categories would be better than specifying only one. Additionally, we discovered that collecting stories in groups made some participants uncomfortable, so we opted to do it solely and with the presence of a researcher. To avoid overwhelming participants, we instructed them to provide only one story with an emphasis on the cultural dimension. Finally, as participants were unable to develop scripts competently, we as researchers developed the scripts from the collected stories. By the end, we collected six stories, all revolve around drinks and food, and created a script from each. You can see a sample script here. Based on these scripts, we created the scenes in the AR application. To use the application, the user points their phone at a simple object, in this case a cup. When it's recognized, it starts to morph into different forms this object can take in different cultures. The user then clicks on a form. And the scene changes into a virtual environment where the object in the selected form is placed in relation to other objects often occurs with it. The user can then move the phone around to explore the full setting. When a scene starts, an audio script starts playing where a host welcomes the guest and begins to narrate an exposition of the setting. After that, the user is given a set of simple commands to assist the host in completing a cultural ritual. 
the action can be performed either by moving the virtual objects around or using the surrounding physical objects. We tested Be Our Guest in Canada with 11 participants from diverse backgrounds, migrants and non-migrants, to determine its usability as a medium for learning about the cultural practices of others. From the user study and in terms of immersion, participants said it was fun and easy to get immersed and comprehend the augmented space because the tool was engaging and easy to use. In terms of perceiving unfamiliar cultural rituals, participants found the IR application to be a pleasant way to experience situations they otherwise would not be able to. They found it useful in helping immigrant communicate their cultural practices and values to the larger community and felt it could help start conversations with people from other cultural backgrounds. The participants also drew connections between the unfamiliar rituals and some practices from their own heritage, creating a bond. Participants who tried scenes related to their own cultural heritage felt emotional and nostalgic, even if they had not experienced the displayed rituals fully in real life. They believe the application could be useful for children of migrants to learn about their cultural heritage and connect with the roots. In a matter of fact, some participants said the application made them learn something new about their own heritage. Looking at the broader concept of cultural exploration through immersive engagement, our study shows that coupling AR with reenacted scripts could not only support cultural sharing among communities, but also connect migrants to their roots. We were able to achieve this cultural learning because the application supports active engagement. Moreover, in the performance, both the narrator and the audience had equal significance. They were both performing as themselves, allowing them to connect with the context of being either a host or a guest. The application also offers agency to the storytellers to communicate their culture without the need for confrontation. And at the same time, the interactor could experience other rituals without worrying about being disrespectful. This break in human-human confrontation gives the different size, time, space and autonomy to reduce the discomfort of such conversations and build understanding. In terms of the broader takeaways for HCI research, we want to talk about integrating theater studies into HCI design. Conceptualizing AR as a prop for theoretical performance allows the designers to create a third space. Unlike many digital media, AR offers this new stage for performing within the subject's current living environment and blurs the boundaries between real and unreal. This overlap through bodily performance changes people's relationship with their place and can recreate an individual's identity. Our project has some limitations. In particular, every scene took a fair amount of time and effort to build as we had to collect the stories, create the scripts and construct the digital objects, which means we could only build few scenes. Moreover, because we collected selective stories, there is a danger of standardizing cultural rituals from one region or culture, resulting in delivering incorrect information. Our suggestion towards wider adaptability is to democratize the tool so that anyone can contribute their experience to the project. We can create a framework where people can share their cultural stories and artifact models and collaborate on polishing them. Then an accessible interface with prefab effects can be used to build scenes from the creative stories and artifacts. Another limitation is that there was no quantitative measures or baseline case used for evaluation. Therefore, pilot testing is needed to formally assess the application's performance in comparison to other tools for sharing cultural heritage. To this end, and on behalf of my colleagues, we thank you for listening. In the full paper, you can find more detailed information about our story collection process and script creation. We also provide comprehensive information on the application's design and use, as well as our participants' feedback. Please feel free to email us if you have any questions or comments.